I own carte blanche and we're only about four months old. We change our menu every two weeks, which is a really different thing for a food cart. We just completely overhaul the entire thing every two weeks and do something different. Um, and so far, um, we've been incredibly successful and it's great. Um, which pot are you in? We are on 32nd and Hoffa. Um, so it's a new pod. Um, there's a cart there called Fried Egg. I'm in love. They are also um, <laughs> getting pretty popular. They're awesome. Um, and then there's an African cart there as well, and it's just the three of us. Um, and I'm sure, as you all know, it's an incredibly bike-friendly area. Um, probably, I, I would. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm not good with statistics, but I like so many of our customers bike there um, and like lock up their bike at their at the fence and then there's also the pod on the spring water corridor that like wouldn't it's on 82nd and like a bad area and it wouldn't be busy at all if you know it wasn't the spring water trail and there were bikes there um, so that's basically what's sustaining that particular pod which is really cool um, also several of my, uh, of my employees bike to work um, it's just you know, it's uh, everything is difficult with money in every business, and the food cart phenomenon has come out of that, um, and is a really cool thing that's come out of that. Um, and I feel like bikes are also just like the the boom in bike transportation is also a reflection of that, and a really positive one. So it's cool that like you know, creativity and good things are happening because people are broke. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we technically, <laughs> technically it's mobile, it's in an old Airstream trailer from like 1964, um, but it's kind of rooted to the, I mean, we're brand new and um, it's tough. Having a food cart is tough. Having a food cart in a like 60-year-old tin can is tough. Um, so like we've been asked to move around, and this is actually our first like shot at catering. It's so good. good. That's the best sandwich ever. Do you all know there's like incredible salads yeah. here? You all yeah. got them. okay. Um, salad. Salad. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's, um, be sure and get some dressing with it. Oh, um, yeah, and these are my favorite. Not yeah. enough of them have been picked up. We also have these eggplant bowls um, no. that are really, really good. Um, help yourselves. So, what made you decision to start? That is the vegetable salad. I went to cooking school, um, and then I worked at a restaurant at Pop Pop. Yeah, Pop Pop, um, and it was awesome, and I learned a lot of stuff there. But I realized there that I didn't want to be like mine. Um, so I wanted to do my own thing, and I wanted to, I got tired of like making the same stuff over and over. So that's why we changed the menu every time. Oh gosh, can we? Sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so Jessica mentioned that we were in Portland, and we're not real familiar. We don't have a lot of food trucks in Seattle. You guys are. Are you all from Seattle? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, and right. so can you explain kind of how the pod? Yeah. Um, it's also a really cool like cultural phenomenon so a lot of times like restaurants that are nearby will just like traditionally be in direct competition with each other and just like try to best each other put each other out of business but with a pod scenario basically they all like feed each other um, and it becomes like a communal dining experience so like people will come in big groups with their friends and somebody will want hot dogs and somebody will want vegetarian food and somebody will want Italian food and somebody will want Thai food and they can all get it get their food and sit at the same table, completely different establishments. Um, so it's really cool, like it, they become little destination points. Um, my favorite one's on Mississippi. Um, it's like a pod and literally like all the carts are in a circle um, and the dining area is in the middle and it's just really nice. And, um, is the city, yeah. is the city set by the pods are or this is just like, it just happens? It just happens, usually there's an owner of the okay. lot and that person makes the bank. Um, yeah. Um, Dylan, I wasn't sure if your question came out of like if they have to be mobile, and in Portland you don't have to be mobile. I just want to Oh, okay. 
Yeah, no, there's, yeah, a lot of cities have weird laws where, like, you can only stay in one place for half an hour and then you have to move somewhere else and they just, there's a lot of, like, laws making it tough to be a food cart because, you know, it's a threat to the restaurant economy and like, stuff like that, so, um, but here it's, you know, it's just become this huge deal, um, and there's that's, a, yeah. There's a book called Cartopia. Mm -hmm. It talks about the yeah. everything on the food carts. Written by my neighbor. Really? Yes, that's it. <laughs> my wife brought it home to the library the other day. What How kind of hours do you keep? Is it late night? Um, a lot of carts are. There's a pod on 12th and Hawthorne that's open for like all the drunk hipsters. It's open to like 3 <laughs> in the morning. Um, but we close at 8 p.m. Um, modest hour, like, so we're lunch and dinner, noon to eight. Mm -hmm. um, but you can make your own hours. That's the other really cool thing about carts is I get to, I can do what I want, mm -hmm. you know, like be open when I want, serve what I want. Um, and it's a really small, you know, just a small little business, um, which has its challenges also. It sucks sometimes being in a tiny kitchen when I want to do all this really complicated food. Um, but at the same time, it's really nice to just, you know, things things tend to get lost, like, in, on the big scale, which, I mean, even, like, today we were kind of, I'm glad the food is good, but it was hard to, like, make it, we've never made an en masse before, and, uh, you know, little garnishes getting lost and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. Also, there's there's dessert, if you guys, <laughs> there's a strawberry awesome. rhubarb crumble, like toffee crumble. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, so save room if you can, but also eat more. <laughs> I guess a, a general question, because then, you know, the, the first time experiencing the, the pod and the food cart phenomena, it was, it was fantastic. Um, but um, coming from the, the city side, you know, the government side, there's always questions about, you know, parking and impact of neighborhoods, right? So people are, at, uh, you know, it's a real popular location and uh, people want to come there to find parking in the residential street. Um, like you said, it's, it's a great biking community, so you got lots of bike corrals and, 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 and it's a huge use. Of, have you heard that there's conflict between the neighborhood and parking? Uh, also, employees who need to find parking. Parking issues. Um, I'm sure. I like our pod is so small that it's not really an issue, and I don't drive and hardly. I mean, you know, and our neighbors are all really nice, um, and we know that we're all friends with them. Um, but I'm sure that it's an issue. And like I said, there's the Springwater Cart Cartlandia. It's called. Is like its focus is bikes. They have bike racks everywhere. Mm -hmm. they have, I think they now have a mobile bike shop there, or a car mm -hmm. bike shop there. Probably. Right? I haven't yeah, been there in a so really long time. Um, it, yeah, it's basically a bike pod, food cart mm -hmm. pod. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's an issue with parking because the pods tend to pop up in these little areas where there isn't, you know, that are like foot traffic heavy and business heavy, mm -hmm. but already, you know. Some of the pods that are in the Areas of Portland that are not in the southeast are actually generating a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic. There's a lot of old, um, old surface lots that are underused or surface mm -hmm. and there's been a genesis of food carts mm -hmm. in those areas. So it's actually uh, using that existing parking, mm -hmm. uh, which is already there, and uh, utilizing um, utilizing part of the lot for food carts, part of it for parking. Oh, yeah. And it seems like there's a conflict, at least in some of the outer areas. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't heard, just in the like news stories about it, I, I haven't heard that parking is the issue. It's, you know, some of it is just um, people being concerned that there are too many of them, or, you know, of course, some restaurant owners would prefer that they not be there. But I haven't heard parking being an issue, and it may be because it's so established all over the city that I think they serve their neighborhood. It's, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I have so many food cart options near me. Why would I, well, I don't own a car, but why would I, if I had a car, why would I drive across town when I can go mm -hmm. a half mile away, a quarter mile away? So it may be more serving neighborhood trips. Well, and ours is a Hawthorne, so it tends to be, it's already foot traffic heavy, and it's, you know, they tend to pop up in places that already have the foot traffic. It's in a neighborhood that's used to having people park in it because it's off of Hawthorne, like it's a really busy area. Um, and that's where they, in order to survive, with the exception of Parklandia, um, they already, they have to pop up in places that already have a lot of business traffic. You know, you're not gonna just be in a quiet neighborhood and 
do any business. <laughs> but probably, I'd say like 30 or 40 percent of our regulars are people who live like five minutes away. Like you're, I mean, it's totally a convenience thing too. Yeah. And you just, you know, it's like the luck of the draw. What, what, you know, like wherever you live, whatever restaurants are close by, no matter how good or like terrible they are, you're gonna go there. I um, think you guys have won the lottery, so. <laughs> Logistically, how do you um, deal with the food preparation? Do you do it all in the cart? We legally have, have to wear a class four food cart, which mm. means everything is done in the cart. It's like a 22 foot oh. t metal tube. You guys have seen Airstream trailers. Um, so it's, yeah, it's an intense little kitchen. Um, fridge space is always an issue, especially like we're really new, but we've gotten popular really quick. Um, so we have an issue of just being able to fit enough food in the fridge yeah. to like, sell, you know, we'll sell out sometimes um, due to space issues. What I heard, I thought why some of the other cities had done it was this whole issue of the establishment traditionally how health departments inspected kitchens and all that kind of stuff, food carts. And here, um, what do you have to do to deal with that? Do they come by and inspect you regularly? And There's like biannual, does that mean twice a year, right? Not two. Yeah, yeah. twice a year? Um, Semi-annual. Semi-annual, thank you. Okay. Um, inspections, there's also, a, you have to um, get like certified with Multnomah County Health Services. Um, they come and inspect the cart before there's any food in it, and then they ins they surprise inspected us on like our second week after our first huge rush. Mm -hmm. Totally, <coughs> um, but it was terrifying. Um, <coughs> so there are inspections, um, and then there's just you know there's health code, and you have to maintain because you never really know, you know, I and mean, you want to be food safe anyway. Um, but yeah, there's um, I think that Portland's like they're always constantly changing the laws or like re-examining things just because there's, I think there's over a thousand food carts in Portland. Wow. Um, I've heard 700, I've heard a thousand, I've heard like 1,500. Um, so I think it's safe to say a thousand. Um, new ones are opening every week. So like it's just a big deal and um, they have to like make the laws consistent and fair and they're always changing them. We have time for one more quick question. Just <laughs> logistically, how do you get water and, and uh, um, electricity? Yeah, water, to, yep. to the fire. <clears throat> okay, well, um, we have a gas stove, so we run on propane. We have two pro propane tanks attached to the back. And then water, um, for our particular cart, we, our landlords are a cleaning business and they have a ton of water. So we just hook a hose up from their building all the way, like several hundred feet to our cart. Um, several hoses attached and it just runs directly from their source to ours. Um, so that's water and then there's, um, all food carts have a, a wastewater tank, a gray water tank and a fresh water tank. And your wastewater tank has to be 15% larger than your fresh water tank um, because they'll overflow and it's gross. Um, and, <laughs> So <clears throat> yeah, so we have that. And then electricity, um, we just had to get a giant cord. My boyfriend actually hooked it up. <laughs> um, giant electrical cord. And we have, <laughs> I don't know. And there's like a, a pole. Um, yeah, gosh, I, I don't really know how to answer that very well, do I? Um, there, yeah, just on the lot where we are. Um, but our landlords were responsible for like providing enough electricity. I think we have 280 volt. Does, would that make sense? That's just what I have in my head. I'm not sure if it's right. 280 volts of electricity. 240. 240? <sighs> What's the name of your food cart? Uh, carte Blanche. Carte Blanche. It's in the program book. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, so dessert is out, and then maybe I'll pass some plates around both ways. Um, right, they're just so basically okay, what needs to Okay. All right. Someone has to be. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.